If you want more time, money, freedom, and have a business that's not reliant on you, then you're in the right place. Each week, Mark Creedon, along with some of the very best business minds in the world, will take you through simple, practical steps you can take to create the business you always wanted. From his own practical experience, Mark will show you how to work less, make more, and get the business you always wanted, the one that you deserve. Now here's your host, one of Australia's most sought after business coaches, Mark Creedon. Hi, and welcome to the next edition of the Mastermind for Business podcast. I'm Mark Creedon, your host. Hey, in these podcasts, in around about 15 minutes, we're going to give you something that you can apply in your service business or professional practice to help you to grow it, to be the business that you really want it to be. One of the big things that I see people sort of kind of getting wrong is understanding what it is that their business actually sells. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. We're going to talk about um, how you can understand what it is that you sell and you can simplify and amplify your business. If you'd like to learn how to do that, you are 100% in the right place. Let's get underway. There's this bookstore in the Ginza district of Tokyo called Morioka Shoten. Now, I saw this when I was in Japan a few years ago and I learned a little bit more about it recently from Taki Moore. And so the concept of this, so Shoten in Japanese is bookstore and Mr. Morioka runs this bookstore. What's different about this bookstore, you know, most bookstores you walk into, there's hundreds of books for you to choose from. What's different about this bookstore is there's only one book. So they run one book for six days, and then at the end of the six days, on the seventh day, they swap it over to the next book. So they, they, they feature you know, 50 books a year, but only one book at a time. And so the question that, that I sort of asked myself when I, when I saw this originally and then when I heard about it again was, what is it that Mr. Morioka actually sells? Because it's not books, right? It's just the one book. But really what he's doing is he's selling, I think he's selling simplicity and, and, and curation. And, um, and that's certainly you know, what, what Taki took out of it when, when he went and had a look at it as well. What Mr. Morioka does is he takes away the confusion of choice. And instead he moves into like a knowledge phase, a knowing phase where he says, this is the book that I'm featuring, and this is the book that you need right now on this particular topic. And I think it's a great way to, that, that we can learn about what it is that we sell in, in our own business. And so the challenge I've got for you is to stop and think about what are you really selling? What are you really selling? What, because it's probably not the product or service that you think it is, it's probably more the outcome, the transformation, what, it, what, what your clients, your customers actually get from doing business with you. And that's what Mr. Morioka does. So what he does, what you get from doing business with Mr. Morioka is you get these things chosen for you, right? It's nice and simple. It's easy to do. So he's simplified a process so that when you go into his bookstore, your only decision is not which book will I buy, but will I buy this book or not, right? So he's taken this whole massive choice. Oh, I don't know about you, but I've certainly walked into bookstores and gone, oh, you know, I'm looking for something a little bit different. And then you wander around and you end up walking out with nothing because there's too many choices. And, and we've certainly spoken, I was talking to one of our clients the other day in a, a retail and wholesale nursery business. And he said, you know, when I first started the business, people would come in and I'd give them a dozen choices and they'd walk away with nothing because choices of that level leads to confusion. Confusion is a turn off and they end up buying nothing at all. So the question to you is in your business, what can you do, Mr. Morioka style, which simplifies the choices? See, people come to you because of your expertise, because of your knowledge, because of your experience in, in your particular market. And so if what you're doing is saying, hey, I've got this whole bunch of choices, you're diminishing your knowledge, you're diminishing your authority as opposed, as opposed to promoting your authority by saying, this is what you need right now. So certainly when people come to our mastermind program, um, we only have one program, right? It's our, it's our Mastermind Business Accelerator program. And we know that the program addresses it. There's a number of models that we work off. We know that the, problem will, that the program will address those problems. So what we know is this. If you are in a service business or a professional practice, you want to double your income in, and work half the time in the business or 18 months or less, this is what you need. We've got a very clear 
avatar of what the problem is, but we also only have the one solution because we know that solution works. So the concept is to look at what are you doing to simplify the choices for your clients so it makes it super easy for them to make a decision around what it is that they should be doing. Do they buy it? Do they not? It's not which one do I buy, but do I buy this or do I not? Creating products or programs that tap into your authority, your knowledge, your skill set, and address the real issue that your client's looking for is going to just, going to simplify your business. And it's going to, it, through simplification, it's going to grow your business because your clients now um, aren't going to be confused. So just think about it from the point of view of Mr. Morioka. It's curation and simplicity. What? How can you curate your clients and how can you simplify what it is that you offer? Now that's a great story. If that was the end of the story in itself, that'd be awesome. But it's not because in addition to simplifying, the other thing he does is he amplifies. And what I mean by that is with each book that he features, there's also other things that he sells, which is not the book, but related to the book. So it might be, it might be artwork that's related to the title of the book. It might be, um, I remember, I remember seeing, selling a book around um, baking. And so there were a very, very limited range of kind of, you know, baking products like, you know, cake molds and those of you know, baking, baking trays or baking molds that were a part of the, the, the sale process. So he's got this book and then he's got some amplification around the book. And so that is now my challenge to you. Number one, think about, are you presenting too many choices? Are you not working off the authority that you have and the expertise that you have in order to curate and simplify? And then the next thing is, once you've worked out how you do that and what it is that you can simplify, the next thing is to work out, okay, I've now simplified, what can I amplify? Are there things that I can either sell as a cross sell or an upsell or a value add into what I'm into what I'm doing. So again, if I look at our mastermind program, we sell the program. Some of the amplification things are some of the additional services that we can provide. So we can help people with their business in terms of the business coaching program. But we've also got a, a mental health wellness uh, program, which can help you know come into people's businesses and work with their team. Or we've got a leadership facility that runs leadership retreats, and so we can amplify certain aspects. It's still around the core product but now it's amplifying the service or the product that you provide. So the challenge really is, is this. Understand number one, let's, let's break it into, let's say three points, right? Number one, understand what it is that you actually sell. And the way I look at that is to think about, it's not a service or a product, it's the outcome. I think there's that old saying, you know, nobody goes to the store to buy, you know, quarter inch drill bit. They go to the store to buy up the hole in the wall in order to put the hook to hang the painting in their lounge room. So what they're buying is the, 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 the hole in the wall that enables them to hang the painting in the lounge room, right? It's the outcome, the transformation. And so what is it that is the outcome in your product or service? What's the transformation? What do people actually get from doing business with you? So number one is to understand what your true product is. Number two is to then work out how can you simplify it like Morioka Shoten? How can you reduce it down? And if you can't reduce it down to one choice, that's fine. But how can you reduce it down to something nice and simple so that, you know, they can have a, you can have a, you know, a small, a medium or a large, right? I mean, let's be honest, you look at the really big players, you know, the movies, McDonald's, most of the burger chains, it's pretty simple. There's a pack. All right, and they don't. Have, they, they might have an extensive menu, but they generally don't show this extensive menu. What they show is the deals, the value deals, the family packs, or the kids packs, or whatever it might be. So it's about how can you create, curate something so that when a client comes and does business with you, the choice is super, super simple for them. Right. So number one, identify what is the true product. Number two, how can you simplify it and curate it down so that. You're, you are trading off your expertise and authority and you're making it so simple for the client to work out what it is that they wanna do that it's a no-brainer for them. Number three is what are the things that you can do to amplify in your business?
what are the things you can do to amplify in your business again you know we're talking about the additional services or um, facilities things that you or things it might just be things that you provide that makes the client you know if you go into into Morigo Kashoten and you buy a book on cooking and and the book is about baking cakes kind of makes sense if you go well while I'm here I'm going to I'm you know I'm going to buy something that's about bake um, about cake baking or if you go into Morioka Shirt and there's a book there on birds and he's got this amazing artwork on the wall that's all about you know birds of Japan it would make sense that you can amplify your product by giving your clients the opportunity to then buy something else that's going to further that experience and journey for them right? and that's really what we're looking to do so Take those three challenges. Let's just go back to what the true product is because I want to share a little story with you if I can. Uh, and that is about, uh, about the concept of, of Baskin Robbins. I've used this lots and lots of times. And my daughter, her first job was at Baskin Robbins. And, and we had this sort of this conversation around what is it that Baskin Robbins sells? And it's, I don't forget what it is, 32 flavors or 42 flavors or whatever it might be. But the reality is there's probably only two times that you buy ice cream, right? It's when you're happy and you want to celebrate when you're feeling a bit miserable and you want to cheer yourself up. So really what Baskin Robbins sells is not ice cream, but happiness. And so if you, are, and I'm using that as an example because often people struggle with what they sell. Well, I'm an accountant, I sell bookkeeping. You know, I sell accountancy service, I sell tax returns. No, you don't. You sell peace of mind. You sell the fact, you, you, you sell the fact that people can reduce their tax and therefore increase their revenue or increase their retained profit rather and therefore improve their lifestyle and take the kids on a holiday to Disneyland. You're selling Disneyland, right? You're not selling a tax return because, and, and the other thing too is, is a great example of that is um, if you're a mortgage broker, can I tell you, I, I drove past this billboard the other day and it said, um, you know, such and such are mortgages. I went, man, nobody wants to buy a mortgage, right? Who wants to, who wakes up in the morning, looks out the window, goes, oh, it's a beautiful, bright day. I think I might go and get myself a mortgage. I'm going to go borrow a million dollars. Nobody does that. But what people do is they wake up in the morning and go, do you know what? I'm now going to buy my dream home or I'm going to expand my property portfolio and buy that investment property. So again, just understanding, and I'm using, say, oh, ice cream and mortgages and tax accountants as examples. When you start to look at what it is that you truly sell, what is your true product? there's some really great examples for you to work on. So number one, work out what your true product is. Number two, think about how you can simplify it, whether it's about packaging it together, putting in value, limiting the number of choices, making it clear as to what it is that, that, that you're offering, simplify it down. Step number three, work out how you can amplify it. What are the additional products or services that you can provide that you can offer to your clients that amplify the outcome or the experience that they get from doing business with you in relation to the simplified product. I reckon there are three really great steps that you can follow to make sure that you are growing your business. See, the easiest way to grow your business is actually to simplify it. And it's a big mistake people make. They think that to grow the business, they've got to make it more and more complex. And usually what happens, it becomes this big unwieldy thing that you can't hang on to. You want to simplify it, understand what the product is, Simplify the offering, amplify the additional offering around the simplified offering, and I reckon your business is gonna go boom. And that's exactly what we hope to achieve for you. Hey, if you have got uh, a lot out of, or even just one thing out of today's podcast, I'd love you to share it because our passion is helping people to grow their business. So share the podcast. If you are in a service business or a professional practice and you'd like to know more about these sorts of things, either these are the things that we teach in our mastermind program, jump on to metropolemastermind.com.au or see what's possible dot today. Let's have a chat and see if we can help you. Look forward to catching up with you in the next episode of the Mastermind for Business podcast.